good to see some uh, non-Iowa fans in the chat here, Don, who are just logged on tonight uh, because they're impressed by what they saw. Um, and, and that means Iowa's getting some national recognition. Again, I don't really... Uh, I mean, I'm thankful to everybody who's on here listening tonight and who's calling in and chatting. But again, I would be just fine with nobody taking notice of Iowa at this point in the season. There's so much left. Um, certainly, I understand the excitement. I'm, I'm just as excited as everybody else is. Um, John DeLon, I hope I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. Do Iowa fans think they're winning a natty this year? The last time that happened, they lost to Northwestern. Uh, I'm assuming he's talking about 2009. Um, when Stanzi went down with the injury, but um, I, I don't think anybody said anything about a national title. We were just talking about a possibility of being in the playoff discussion. Um, let's see here. Scrolling through the... Uh, you know, let me say one thing. Knowing, knowing the players as well as I do, they're not going to sit around and talk about getting positioned to win a national title. They're going to talk about finding a way to be 6-0. and one game at a time. Absolutely. Um, James Kelly says, how many games now where Iowa's opponent scores 24 or less? It's like 26. Isn't it somewhere in there, Don? I think so, yeah. But it's impressive, and I actually worried about it. Um, I don't want to say midway through the third quarter, but I thought, you know, that that's, I know that the streak doesn't really mean anything, but for us fans, we like, we like those numbers. Um, I thought maybe – Maryland would get that in garbage points or, you know, garbage time, but that certainly didn't happen. Um, we do have another call here for you, Don. Thank you for calling <laughs> Iowa post game at the voice of college football. Who's on the line. Hi, Corey. Uh, hi coach Patterson. It's Dave Knight. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you, Dave? Very well, Dave. Good, good. Glad to hear that. And, uh, thank you both for, taking time out late uh, tonight to do this. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We're, we're enjoying um, ourselves. Cool. Hey, I'm, I'm not a really an Iowa fan and you guys were just talking about that. There's a lot of different people here. Um, I do have a ton of respect for the football program and I think they represent what's good in college football quite a bit. Um, it looks like most of the notoriety they get goes to the defense, right? And I think you have more, uh, more than better chance to run the table what happens in the Big Ten championship game. You know, that's one of those wait and see. But let's say if they were to win everything and we're going to the college football playoffs, would the offense have the capability of putting up a large number of points on the board because that's you know, kind of how it's, it's played out the, the last few years where teams were putting a lot of, uh, you know, points on the board, even when they were matched up against good defenses. Uh, well, what do you guys think about that? I would say this. One reason I'm not sure that applies to this year is some of those offenses that you're talking about that were so, um, so productive in recent years have lost a lot of players to the NFL. Uh, you know, Clemson is clearly not the same team they were. They're not even going to be in the playoffs. But right now, there were a lot of a lot of um, really accomplished players that finished their eligibility last fall. And for that reason, I don't know if you can say anybody has an unstoppable offense out there. I certainly wouldn't say Iowa does, and yet we put up a lot of great numbers to, tonight. Uh, but the bottom line, I think we have a chance, whoever we're playing, even if it's in game 14 or game 15, I think we have a chance to slow them down to the point that we can maybe find a way to outscore them. Maybe the score is 14 to 10. It may not be a lot of points, but my point is I think we have a chance to slow anyone down because to be able to execute against Iowa has to require a lot of patience. You know, you need to go into the game realizing we're not going to have a three-play drive for 70 yards. If we score from 70 yards, it's going to be – 12 plays or 14 plays because they're not going to give up big plays. Uh, you know, the concept is, is great. It's very, very well coached. The players understand it and believe in it. And you've got to be able to execute over a long period of time. And most offenses will manage to screw that up before they get to the goal line. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I just want to throw this stat out because our good friend, Mark Rogers, just, uh, commented this Iowa outscored Indiana, Iowa state and Maryland, 112 
to 37. So, um, and, and again, we are talking about how much turnovers can be sustainable. We are seeing that, like, again, like I said earlier, we are seeing the turnover trend sustain itself caller. And I'm not saying that I was going to be able to compete for a, for a playoff berth. Even I'm not even saying that yet, but in the playoffs, I have no idea. But again, like Don said, if the defense can, I think this defense will keep them in every game. Now, they're playing Alabama. They're playing Georgia. All bets are off. I don't know. But they're, the schedule that's ahead, I, I have a hard time seeing this defense not keeping Iowa in every contest. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and that's why I was saying it seemed like every, all the talk was about the defense, creating turnovers, uh, maybe giving the offense some really nice field position to work with. Uh, but I, I was got both of your points and me personally having watched Penn State play and not having seen you guys play quite as much I feel like you have the nod over Penn State um I just you know Sean Clifford's been there at uh, Penn State for 10 years and he doesn't impress me and I, I just feel like you guys got the nod over them but you know the uh, head-to-head competition speaks for itself, but that was all I had. Hey, we appreciate the call. Thanks for calling tonight, and uh, appreciate the kind words towards Iowa. Okay, you guys take care. You too. Um, we do have another call here, Don, but before we before we take this next call, um, I want to say this. As it relates to Penn State, you talked about their ability to get the ball downfield. That defense is really stout. I would venture to say, I would almost guarantee you, it's a better defense than Maryland. Not. Oh yeah, I would agree. Um, okay, well, we do have another caller here. Thank you for calling Iowa post game with the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Um, I'm. This is John Murray. I'm wondering about that pot bomb at the fullback position. I mean, I am so hyped up about that guy. <laughs> I know Iowa has got the game when that guy is rolling like tonight. He's like six foot one, Don. He's a big guy. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Potterbaum. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we were rolling. He is, a, he is a good fullback. What excites me is when we, we break some of our tendencies and give him the ball because he's not a bad runner either. There is. I mean, I'll tell you what. You guys are – saying, okay, we're not going to talk about the national title and all that. Let's go one game at a time. But I'm telling you what, if that guy is doing what he's doing tonight, come on. <laughs> I mean, that is our that is our recipe right there. Now, I mean, last time I checked, he can only block one person, right? So I think we need to get some other blocks, too. How many carries did that guy have? 40? I mean, that guy was awesome. He, he did have a carry at one point um, that felt like he could have broken. In fact, I made that comment as we were watching him. I said, man, it would have been cool to see Potterbrum break one. Don, what are the chances of full? When's the last time you've seen a fullback take one for 40 yards, Don? Well, we might have to use, a, use up a timeout to get him 40 yards down the field. I don't know. But uh, I, do appreciate how he, I do appreciate how he blocks. He understands his role. You know, typically he's going to be – a lead blocker, if he's in the game, he's at the point of attack. That's the way fullbacks operate. All right. So every time he's got the ball, we're going to say this word. Pot a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I, I, listen, a good friend of mine uh, who was watching the game with us tonight is a huge fullback guy. So every time he gets the fullback, it's it's a show in here. So uh, – I, I totally I totally get you. And let's be honest, Don, the fullback dive at Iowa and the quarterback sneak seems to be basically a guaranteed two to three yards every time. So when you're inside the three or inside the two, you basically, I don't want to say you're guaranteed a touchdown, but it seems like you are with the, with the squad. Well, maybe there needs to be a rule change for college football. Maybe they could call it the Potterbaum rule because near as I can tell, on a quarterback sneak because of Potterbaum, there's no way we're going to lose yardage. We're always going to gain that one yard. I think there's got to be a better nickname, though, for Potabom. I'm sure that'll develop, but you're right, caller. Uh, he looks good, and I think from what I've heard, the coaches have a lot of trust in Turner Palisard, the backup fullback, Don. I don't know if you know much about Palisard, but this every year, this, this team, I mean, they just develop fullbacks like there's no tomorrow. And let me just say this about the fullback, Don. 
and maybe you have some perspective on this that I don't, but to me, being a fullback at Iowa is an incredibly selfless position. It's a sacrifice. Here's guys, here's guys who are converted linebackers. You're not making it to the NFL as a fullback, Don. And these guys right. have to know that when they're when they switch over, they're going to be taking a lot of hard hits. They're not going to get the spotlight much. And again, they're basically saying, "I'm not going to the to the NFL." I mean, that's a selfless sacrifice, Don. Yeah, people have asked me through the years, if you could play all day with just one formation, what formation would you pick? And for me, it would be pretty easy. It would be pro, a pro formation that involves 21 personnel. And I think most of the listeners do understand 21 personnel means two backs, one tight end. That, of course, allows for two receivers. And, of course, those two backs, one of them is a fullback. And we've had some great ones at Iowa, guys like – Lou Montgomery and David Hudson come to mind. And, of course, that's way back in time. But those guys were tremendous blockers and very good runners. Anything else, caller? Thank you, guys. Hey, No, that's it. Thank you. Appreciate the call and go Hawks. Go Hawks.